you got to be able to extend it out for a full 40. So here we go. Drew Timmy and Zane meets at center court. Timmy wins the tap, and Gonzaga's got the ball first tonight in this West Coast Conference game. We're back. We're back in Spokane. Always great to be here. Always. Nice pass. Julian Strother and Anton Watson finishes plus a foul. I mentioned how Timmy struggled a little bit in that game. In San Francisco, Anton Watson did not. And you know, they're looking to help. If you're USF, you're picking and choosing who you're going to help off of. Sometimes that means that Anton Watson's going to have some clean looks. He's got to be assertive and put himself in a position where on the catch, he can finish and be strong. Came up way short on that free throw. Watson and Drew Timmy both excellent shooters from the field. Both have struggled at the free throw line this season for Gonzaga. So now San Francisco with the ball for the first time. And that's a five-second violation. Man, very sloppy. Isaiah Hawthorne just held the ball. A turnover for the Dons. Dons have to value the ball. They have to be able to get back and set up their defense as often as the case for every team that comes in this building. Gonzaga's ability to run on misses, on turnovers, they can hurt you in a quick fashion. Strother, a little runner, and that one doesn't fall. And now a whistle and a foul on the floor against Josh Coonan. Yeah, Coonan leaned in, two hands on Anton Watson on the battle underneath the basket. And what looked like it was a stop now ends up being another possession. And for Chris Gerlofsson in his first season as the head coach for the Dons, so many tight games that they've had throughout the course of this season. You know, even the other one last week against St. Mary's, they felt like they should have won. But it's it's one or two possessions of poor execution. And lately it's been in the final four minutes. I think tonight it's about the first four minutes. Can you handle this environment? Can you can make sure you put yourself in a great position? And picking up multiple fouls away from the ball isn't going to help. Two fouls on Coonan. He comes out of the game. Then immediately Hawthorne commits a foul after San Francisco turned the ball over on their first possession. So inauspicious start. I think it's fair to say for the Dons. That's a Stanford word right there for you. Folks. And a USF word too. Rajir Bolton. He could have gotten fouled. In fact, he did. They call a foul against Roberts. Not a UCLA word. Though. <laughs> <laughs> Just being honest. I'm going to email some of your old professors and check about that. Professor Amy Davis, how are you? Four fouls against San Francisco already. We're not even a minute into the game. Well, if you like free throws, this might end up being the half that you've been waiting for all year. Uh, that's hard to do. Four team fouls in well, 50 seconds. And, and what did Coach Gerlison tell us today? Should have, was one of the things he said was the key to the game tonight. Yeah, defend without fouling. Keep them off the free throw line. Gonzaga only attempted, what, 10 or 11 free throws in that first game? And already they've gotten there multiple times. It's not a good start for the Dons. They've got to settle themselves down, and they can do it by executing this end of the floor. So the second possession now for San Francisco, and their great senior guard scorer, Khalil Shabazz, gave it up. Another big-time scorer. Roberts pulls up for three, and that one a little too strong. That's the first shot attempt they've had in the game. Watson down low to Timmy, and Meeks just was totally left behind. One of the most underrated aspects of the Gonzaga program has year in and year out been the bigs that can distribute and pass the ball, and that was a perfect example. Hard screen set by Meeks. Here's a three look for Newberry, in and out no good. And here come the Zags again. Guido Newberry, who checked in when Coonan went out with his two fouls. Watson, they left him all alone. And he had it stripped away. Shabazz now going to try to take Hickman one on one. No. Good defensive transition getting set back up. I do think Shabazz could have been a little bit more aggressive, but the start to this game has been a night. Run your offense through, even in transition. And that's been a thing that really you look over time as you see Drew Timmy second on the all time scoring list. But Kelly Olinick, Brandon Clark. Elias Harris, there's so many great bigs that have come to this program. And one of the reasons why Mark Few is comfortable with his bigs being out there is because, listen, if my guys are comfortable there and the other team's bigs are not, that's an advantage for us. Great spacing. Created some space for Hickman with the help defense shading toward Timmy. Strother off the offensive rebound, takes it all the way. 
Well, San Francisco's got to wake up here. These first few minutes have been ugly. Shabazz draws the foul. So he'll get to the free throw line chance for USF to get their first points. Mark Few. I, I, look, was it perfect in Moraga? It was not. But I think Mark was proud of the effort of his team at some level. Aid Mahaney took the game over, made some incredibly difficult shots. There have been games that the Zags have lost in the past where you and I have been around Mark. He's been a lot less happy. He was okay with the way his team played last weekend. I, I think he, he looked at it and saw the ability and the want to in defending and elongating out the number of possessions that they could stack and defend. Um, and, then, and then it came down to, yeah, some circus shots. I mean, look, credit the tip cap to the offensive player, but you, know, you got Anton Watson on him. He's shooting over length. I mean, some of the still images of the limited room. Look out. Watson baseline. Nobody guarded him or challenged him. He just laid it in. Do you notice how the offense is really spaced out, and they're moving well without the ball? to find the open spot and that's where Gonzaga's offense is at its best if it's stagnant and you're waiting for just one person to make the play that's when they start to get bogged down a little bit and allow defensive players to really load to the ball Roberts lost it Timmy steals it here's Watson on the run out and he'll Woo! dunk it home with Hawthorne right in his face Strong move and a 10 point lead in the first three and a half minutes. That starts at the defensive end, though. They, they've been bought in once again so far. Extra pass. Hawthorne passed up the three. Now he shoots the three way off the mark. Shabazz, though, with the offensive rebound. Shabazz, open three. Good. Yeah, he can get you back in a hurry. So as sluggish as the start is here, the three point shot, this team that casts away from the outside. Now, whether or not they hit him. That's another story, but Shabazz is one of those guys. Offensive rebounds, not afraid to mix it up. Timmy shoots the three, long rebound, and it was Gonzaga and Hickman quicker to the ball. It, the opposite of the game on the hilltop where San Francisco was the team that was quick to the ball. What a move, spinning. Timmy right around Mark Kovetsky. Timmy, two of three shooting. I mentioned three of 16 in San Francisco, and... Mark Eveski was the one that was on him a ton in that game and just leaned on him and caused some issues. Timmy went for the steal here. If Timmy was flat in that game, he's not flat here tonight. Not I mean, at all. He's all over the place right now. Shabazz missed a good look, so here comes Gonzaga again. Timmy gives it up to Strother. Three. No. Watson couldn't quite get to that one and Karen's out of bounds. That defensive consistency, a point of emphasis for Mark Few. He's got to be pleased. Can't just gotta move the ball. You've got to space the floor. You've got to cut. You've got to move without the ball and find the open spot. This offense, for so long in recent years, the efficiency in which it's had has been predicated upon cutting and moving and spacing when you don't have the ball. Ty Roberts missed the shot, but... The big man Samba Gigi Beria, who just came in for USF, was fouled on the floor. So foul against Gonzaga. Dons will keep the ball. Looking for something here. You mentioned right now 12 nothing advantage in the paint. San Francisco is a team that largely lives by the three-point shot. But you've got to apply some pressure to them here. Shabazz drives baseline. Good dish to Meeks, who lays it in. That, that, that's a good attack. You know, they're going to close out hard to Shabazz. That means he, he might have a scene to drive, and that will force the back line of defense to vacate their spot. Timmy, a little hook shot on the baseline. Another tap back rebound. Malachi Smith, no good for three. Timmy will track this one down. The USF getting to zero loose balls in the first few minutes. Marcus Williams just in the game comes up with a defensive rebound. He's been a spark for San Francisco over the last month or so. Now this three guard lineup can cause some problems because they isolate speed on usually your small four. Meeks, wide open three, no good. He's got to be able to knock that one down. Timmy, good post position and just going to school. Gigi Berry had no chance to defend that move. Timmy's got that angry look in his eyes. He does. I mean, remember that USF game? You and I were sitting there courtside and we're going, what's wrong with you, Timmy? I even asked you, I'm like, do you think he's sick? Because he just looked a little flat. 
And tonight, his energy level, his activity has been at an elite level. Meeks tries to make a move against him. He scores with a foul. Last couple of baskets for USF, trying to finally get a piece of that pain a little bit. That will open up their perimeter game. If you're able to, to find your way to the basket and have some success, it'll start to shrink the defense, which will increase the quality of three-point shot that the Dons might be able to find. And you see Meeks, those numbers he put up against his ex, 14.7 rebounds, the first meeting between these two. So San Francisco, look, the start could not have been worse. And yet, feels like they've sort of found their footing now. They got to start getting some stops down at this end of the floor, though. Zag shooting 50% at home on their home court. Not a good recipe for success. Zag a ball. Then Greg in for the first time, the young big man who's given Gonzaga some nice minutes this year. He picked up a couple quick fouls the other night, kind of disrupted his ability, but he could shoot it from the outside. There he is, in and out. No good. Another loose ball that was just kind of hanging there, but San Francisco does come away with it. Roberts over to Marcus Williams. Nice dribble move, goes baseline and air ball there. Rough game he had over the weekend against Santa Clara. Malachi Smith got cut off. Strother, another runner. He loves those kind of shots. We talk so much about his ability to shoot from the outside, and I think one of the best areas of his game is settling down and getting that little two foot floater, little runner as he gets into the paint. Jujaberia just lost it. Now Newberry is going to be fouled by Greg going for the ball. That was a beautiful pass by Shabazz in a really tight window. That's one where your big man, you're relying on, not the easiest play, but you got to catch those. That'll be a dunk if you do. And Salas comes in for the first time. Shabazz, catch and shoot, good, just beautiful on the out-of-bounds play. Assume every out-of-bounds play is going to Shabazz or Roberts. And occasionally they'll look to Meeks, but they're going to run a staggered double and try to get into the corner, and that was too easy. Salas, wide open, three is good. Mark Hughes, and he has put in so much work on his shot. They'd like to see him step up at this end of the floor, though. Yeah, and Mark was telling us today, Hunter really has become a much more reliable shooter Ooh. behind the back pass, and then the layup was missed by Hawthorne. Wow, that was beautiful. Just no finish. Bolton three. Good! You miss a layup against Gonzaga, and it almost always is going to lead to something on the other end. Another nice pass. Greg gets called for his second foul in the last minute. Sends us to another timeout. Rule number one against the Sags. Find him in transition. Pointing is not good enough. In that game on Saturday, you and I have here against BYU. Chijaberia at the free throw line out of the timeout. I know Nolan Hickman has taken some criticism this year. And they have such a tradition. We just watched Dan Dickow get his jersey honored in the Raptors here before the game tonight. Incredible tradition at that point guard spot for Gonzaga, but Hickman is a very important player for this Zags team. Well, and, and you got to learn how to play the spot and how to read everything you're asking you to read. I mean, it's also unfair to go ahead and measure every point guard up to the NBA pros that have been funneled through here in recent years at that position. Oh, my man. Drew Timmy is just working these USF big men over and over again. I mean, what he's able to do is he feels the defensive player so well on the catch. And, and he knows exactly where he wants to go. Well, you know, fine. He be arm on that side. I mean, there's three or four fouls before he even got up to the shot attempt. It gets very quiet here. When he's at the free throw line. Well, Dave, it gets quiet <laughs> partially because he's shooting 60%, and that's yeah. coming off of a game where he knocked down a ton of free throws.
It's been a struggle for him. I mean, he's worked a lot. We, every time we walk in the gym, we see Timmy working on free throw shoot. It just hasn't translated. He'd, he'd, he's already averaging 20 plus a game. He'd be way higher than that if he were making 75, 80% of his free throws. Roberts hits the three. And that's the read that they have to figure out because they go drop coverage with these guards. And that's what they did. They dropped off and gave space. Roberts and Shabazz, they're more than capable of knocking down that three. Smith down the lane. Malachi Smith scores. Now he had a great offensive game against St. Mary's. Some defensive miscues, but really was an important part uh, of that team late in that contest. Yeah. There's Bolton fouling out. Some huge moments. Smith was the guy to get some of the biggest baskets of the game for Gonzaga. Good defense by Bolton there. Shot clock under 10. Hawthorne had it knocked away. Stayed inbound. Shot clock down to three. High off the glass. Never hit the rim. Came up with a loose ball. It's a shot clock violation. That's good defense right there. Malachi Smith, we mentioned it. You know, offensively, some good things. Defensively struggled. Allowed his guys to get to the cup a couple of times late in that, in that contest on Saturday. That time, did an outstanding job. Position defense. Getting into Roberts, not allowing him to have to be comfortable at all. Zach shooting 58%. Salas not that time. Look wow. out. Threw it to the students. And he might have slipped, huh? Maybe that caused that errant pass. It sure goes without okay. saying, San Francisco cannot lose Khalil Shabazz. He's been a warrior his entire career. And of course, last year's team that made that run into the NCAA tournament. Really a historic season for San Francisco. Timmy was <laughs> looking like he was <laughs> going to make his spin move again. And then Gigi Berry had just dropped down. He was, okay, fine. They, you keep backing up and giving him space. Really comfortable there. Javaria trying to put it on the floor. Got his own miss. And got a shot rejected by Salas. Meeks three. Good. Kind of a bad break for the Zags. The block shot went right to Zane Meeks. Give him credit for taking advantage. Here's Timmy again. This time goes by and scores with a foul. Having a huge first half. Drew Timmy. Up to Timmy, three of 16 on the hilltop, five of seven to start this game. I mean, just a completely different level of aggressiveness. And you know, he's put up some big numbers against the Dons in the past. It was a couple years ago during COVID. I, you were in San Francisco. I was in L.A. calling the game. But, I mean, he, he didn't miss. And by the time the, the audience joined us on the national level because the third game in front of us went so long, he had like 16 points in like 12 minutes. And I think the audience stuck with us just to watch him destroy the Dons that night. And he might be on his way to doing the same thing here tonight. I know his fan base in Texas stuck with us that night. For sure. Timmy, a Texas kid. Ball knocked away. Great outlet. Salas, the catch. That's the Vaz. Yeah. They're going to yeah. call him for that grab around. That's an easy call. The last, the last line of defense. Quit playing soccer. Get a red card. With the last defensive player, you know, and Shabazz loses it. Timmy with a beautiful touch pass and just trying to wrap up from behind. He's not trying to hurt him or anything, but that, that's going to be called intentional every single time when you're grabbing and you're holding from behind. Yeah, that was the definition of that rule. So Salas gets the free throws. Gonzaga will keep the ball. Again, USF, Temple, pace of the play, you know, not out of the realm of where you want it to be. But what, what is, is the efficiency in which Gonzaga is playing with right now. I mean, they're, they're scoring one and a half points per possession on this game. And you, you ideally don't even want it to be at one. Double team came. Timmy passed out of it. And then Watson was wide open for the dunk. Josh 
Kuna just got lost. He's back in the game with two fouls. He's going to be back on the bench here in a second. Yeah. Seven nothing run in less than a minute. Shabazz three with a hand in his face. Right. He single handedly has done everything he possibly can here in the first half. A ten point three of five shooting. Timmy, that was better defense, and he scored anyway. He's got 14. There's still almost eight minutes to go in the first half. Shabazz got fouled on the three. Salas, almost like he kind of undercut him a little bit. Well, getting points in the paint have come with ease so far here tonight for the Gonzaga Bulldogs. A lot of it's facing the floor. Fine. Um, you know, Brandon Miller continues to put on shows. Houston, I don't think, is going to be challenged too much in the Americans. One and two seeds, including the Bruins. Yeah, I, I think really for UCLA, it's going to come down to that final game against Arizona inside Pauley Pavilion. So if the Bruins are able to win that game and even that up to a 1-1 series between the two of them heading into Las Vegas, I think the Bruins might have the upper hand to, to move up into that one line. They were pretty set that Purdue's going to be there barring a collapse. I think Alabama continues to play well. They did a great, nice win last night over Florida. Um, you know, Brandon Miller continues to put on shows. Houston, I don't think, is going to be challenged too much in the American, which which therefore means that those three teams are, are pretty good heading into the final month. Shabazz makes all three free throws out of the timeout, so it's 38-26. Pac-12, strange year in the Pac-12 in a lot of ways. You get unquestionably two of the best teams in the country. But no doubt. After that, it has often been a struggle. Different, really. I mean, it's a different level. Nola Hickman short on the three. But the WCC, it's, it's always got Gonzaga near or at the top. St. Mary's been a really consistent program. But some of the depth in the WCC has shined through this year. Well, yeah, and I think you've, you've seen that rotation. And you look at the standings right now, I think one and two are going to be set for looking at what it's going to be like in Vegas. Now, whether or not St. Mary's loses a game before they finish off the season up here, I, before they get here to make that game for maybe potentially a co-championship, that's to be determined. But when you look at the net ranking right now and what St. Mary's has done, what Gonzaga has done, Everybody else is really boxed in. I mean, San Francisco, they go on a little bit of a run here. They've got some home games. All of a sudden, they could play their way out of that and play the first couple of nights. And they could start their tournament on Saturday. Bolden was just wide open, missed the three. Don's got away with one there. Hawthorne will attack the basket and oh, wow. offensive foul. Watson was there to draw the charge. A rough first half for Isaiah Hawthorne. Been a rough first half for really anyone not named Shabazz and, and Meeks. But mainly Shabazz. I mean, everybody else has really struggled to shoot the ball and score the ball here in the first 14 minutes. Starters out there for the Zags. The ball movement has been really good tonight. Eight assists to only one turnover for the Zags. There's Timmy. That's a real tough shot. He hits it anyway. Wow, Drew Timmy. 16 now in the first half. Uh, I don't like Meeks one-on-one -on -one with Drew Timmy. I don't like a lot of people one-on-one -on -one with Drew Timmy, but Meeks in particular, he's leaning and he's extending his forearm. That's allowing Drew Timmy to know exactly where he is. Williams comes up short on the three. You got to make Drew Timmy feel uncomfortable. You got to change looks. You got to bring help from different places. Make him guess. Make him think. He looks, he looks pretty comfortable to me right now. Passing, scoring, doing whatever. Watson missed the shot. Got his own miss. Timmy loses an assist, but still made a really good play. I mean, this is a tough shot, but defensively, look at how you're leaning on. He knows where he can find space. The thing is, an offensive player, if you're in rhythm and you're playing with confidence and you can find space, you go to the space and you, and you take it. First of two for Anton Watson. In and out, no good. Full afternoon of college basketball Saturday on ESPN in the app. 
Kentucky Georgia gets it started noon Eastern every game's big for Kentucky right now Alabama Auburn great rivalry on the hard court at two Eastern Duke Virginia Charlottesville will be a scene at four Eastern on Saturday on ESPN on the app you and I will be right here again for BYU and Gonzaga it's gonna be a great day last Saturday was awesome look out Dave I, I was ready to receive the pass. It was just off. It was a bad call by me. It was it's too far away from you. <laughs> I, it wouldn't be a great scene, I don't think, if I went diving over the table onto the court. You'd be like the volleyball girl that we now show every single time on top place. Oh, that's true. Oh, yeah. all time sell, out and, place. sell out and make a commitment to make a play, Dave. Roberts baseline. Finds Meeks. That was a good look, and Meeks hits another three. Yeah, I mean, what he's giving up at the defensive end, he's making up for at the offensive end with his ability to knock down shots. Dons are trying to hang around. Hickman crossover move in and out. Timmy was there. <laughs> Even that one was pretty impressive. No basket. He was fouled on the floor. He can't handle Drew Timmy. Not many people have. That's why he's number two on the all-time scoring list here. That number two will be honored here someday. Double bonus for the Zags from here until yeah. halftime. The jersey recognition. Obviously, Dan Dick out tonight. Courtney Vandersloot, one of the elite players all-time in this program's history. Just recently joined the Liberty with an all-star roster there. Well, Timmy makes both free throws. He's up to 18 first half points. We have five minutes to go in the first half. He's the best 38 for him. He might, that, that might be in range tonight. I think it is. Pass was deflected and off of Gonzaga. Justin Beaker has not played much. He's in the game for the Dons. Chris Gerlison's looking for somebody, anybody. What's your level of confidence? How ready are you to go out and make a difference in the game? Challenge. Yeah, that's what separates the great teams and just the, the good ones is your ability to show up every single night and compete. Ooh, what a move by Roberts. Beaker from the outstanding high school, Jesuit high school in Oregon. An outstanding freshman basketball player by the name of Jacob Gorman. He's off to a good start this year. Huh. He's got a report on some high school hoops. Bolton answers the Roberts basket. Well, Gonzaga is already to 45 as a team. So it's not just Timmy, it's everybody. Usually if the the game plays out and your idea is we got to outscore Gonzaga, that's not going to work out well for you. You know what also doesn't work out? What? Playing Gonzaga after they've lost a game. Yeah. Can hurt. <laughs> the team gets bad. They get angry. You want to come out. I'm serving it tomorrow night, 4 to 8 p.m. at the hotel. Could be fun. Dave, you'll be there. All right, Connors. Gas up the Disney jet. Let's see you out here tomorrow for happy hour. Let's go. Farney, happy hour, 4 to 8. Wojo, come, and come on, coach. We got to make that happen. I, I will give my partner. Look, it's a little bit of a running joke here in the WCC. That was a tough offensive possession and a shot clock violation. What time of the game is Farnham going to mention the flatbread each night? We do a Zags game. And look, we have fun with it. But this is legit. And I'm going to pump my partner up here. Tomorrow night, we're going to raise 20 grand, something yep. like that, for Coaches versus Cancer with the folks here in Spokane who will come by, say hi, talk some hoops with us, have Sean serve the flatbread that's named after him over at the hotel. It's going to be fun. Yeah, it's really a fun night and yeah. a really cool thing. And people ask all the time about this community. It is what makes this place special and unique. They love their basketball team, and they love pretty much anybody associated with it. And Drew Timmy hits the floor and makes the tough shot. They love him. Can we get him to over there to serve a few up? <laughs> Let's ask him after the game. He, he'd do it. What a first half. Timmy's got 20. 
Roberts. Well, Roberts is matching Shabazz in terms of trying to keep San Francisco in this game. But Very good you play. can try, but if you only try it at the offensive end and they're getting anything they want down here, well, that becomes a problem. Rare miss for Timmy. He said he was fouled. They have a 20 plus point advantage in the paint right now. Shabazz three. Off to the side. Straw the rebound. Two and a half to go. First half. Bolton in transition. Nice high arcing shot from Bolton. Did you see how quick he got into that and he got his feet set? He knew that shot was going to go down before his feet got to the spot in which he was confident that he'd elevate and finish. I, mean, I don't say this hard enough. Or I say this often enough. Gigi Beria dunks at home. It, I don't think USF is not playing very hard tonight. It doesn't seem to me. Down here in particular. Yeah. Well, that's all that's a good yeah. That was an easy call. San Francisco has had a few decent moments here in the first half. Meeks from the corner. Three is good. He's now their leading scorer with 14 points. That's his third made three. Really the only thing keeping. USF in this game is their three-point shot. What a cut and a great pass. Bolton to Salas. That was a Joel Ayayi type play. It was. We haven't seen a lot of those. It was. Get into space. Postman's occupying the defense. Your defensive player on near side corners watching the ball. Back cut. I think the Zags have missed Joel Ayayi and that. I mean, he had an incredible ability and knack for that. Just great feel. I mean, he made that offense click. Roberts maybe should have just shot the ball. They're going to call a foul against Meeks for knocking Salas down. Let's go back to that last possession, though, and show you what I was talking about. Watch the dribble strong side. You've got a post up occupying the defense, a little pin and seal. As Williams is watching the ball, that's what allows Salas the opportunity to cut right to the cup. So now the officials are talking about whether that should be a, a shooting foul. And they're bringing Salas to that end of the floor. So he's going to get free throws. Salas has seven points already in this first half. Make it eight. Maybe the biggest women's basketball game of the year so far. Leah Boston undefeated number one South Carolina. Angel Reese undefeated number three LSU. Something's got to give, as they say. Two <laughs> Eastern, Super Bowl Sunday on ESPN and the app. Have you seen the ticket prices? I have I mean, not. They're going for over $1,000 a pop wow. on StubHub. And that's not even courtside. I mean, it's the hottest ticket in college basketball this weekend, and deservedly so. Don Staley's program, outstanding. Kim Mulkey's program since she's arrived at LSU. Looking to fight and get that national prominence, that national respect. I think they're there. And Greg hits the three. Well, Angel Reese helps that out a ton. I mean, all she does is get double doubles. Six. They've actually scored the ball pretty effectively. You, you give the Zags on pace for 112. That's that's tough sledding. That was a brick. Coonan offensive rebound. And Meeks just lost it. Just dribbled it off his foot, I think. Yeah, settle it down. One shot. And yes, that calls the foul. So even though Gonzaga was going to hold for the last shot, Don's committed another foul. That'll be more free throws for Gonzaga. Think about this, we mentioned it earlier, and Coach Gerlofson talked to us about it, the desire and the need to keep Gonzaga off the free throw line. Only 10 or 11 attempts in the first game. This will be attempt number 15 of the first half. So what does that tell you? Well, you're chasing defensively, you're playing with your hands, but why? Because a lot of it is, is movement, action without the ball. Good patience, good shot selection by Gonzaga. They've been the more aggressive team at this end of the floor. And because of that, they've gotten to the free throw line. Good analysis. 
Both free throws good for Hunter Salas. He's in double figures. Man, what a first half for still feels like a game where if he wanted to, he could get 40 plus. I mean, he could he right now against this San Francisco opponent looks basically unstoppable. It's probably too many points to become the all-time leading scorer in school history tonight. Williams goes all the way, lays it in. But that leaves time for Gonzaga. Here's Bolton in transition, flips it up and in. What a way for the first half to come to a close. All right, so we'll see if the Dons can maybe make a little push here in the first few minutes of the second half. Put some pressure on a Gonzaga team that has had to play a lot of close games in conference play. Not looking like we're going to have one of those here tonight. Well, three-point shot can be the great equalizer, and the one thing that the Dons did a great job in the first half was scoring from beyond the arc. As we see Kuhn take make an aggressive, strong move and a straight line drive after a jab step. Don, 6 of 15, shooting from the outside. Most of Zane Meeks and Khalil Shabazz. Timmy gave it up, and I think the whole idea was just to get it right back, and he went right past Meeks, who was forced to foul him. That's the fourth foul that Drew Timmy has already drawn in this contest. Him and Anton Watson now have combined for eight fouls drawn. I'm not picking on Chris Gurlifson, but it, it's rare where a coach is so specific about part of the game plan, and then it just goes so wrong from what that plan was. And ultimately, it's up to the players to execute the game plan. First free throw goes down, but the, the whole idea for San Francisco coming into this game was defend without fouling. And they just have not been able to do that. 12 fouls in the first half. A lot of them came real early on. The way they have four in the first three minutes. Offensive rebound, wide open three. Hickman, no. If there's one area that you're looking at the Zags going, what, what, where can they do better than what they did in the first half? It is from beyond the arc. Just 25% on the night so far from three. Job. That time Timmy cut Coonan off. Now a whistle and a foul away from the ball. They're going to call Anton Watson. Uh, Anton Watson's had a, an excellent year. He really has. I mean, he just understands his role and delivers to that every single night. Part of what made the end of the game the other night in Moraga so impressive Another good defensive play by Timmy for Aid Mahaney and St. Mary's was that so many of those shots for Mahaney came with Watson guarding him. Roberts missed the three. Timmy rebound. Strother had Shabazz on him, realizing this match and went to work. Asking Shabazz a little bit too much. He's got to lunge and reach to try to get that deflection right away because in a pure post-up game, the length is going to be too much for him to handle. Coonan couldn't get it to Meeks. Meeks was there for the offensive rebound, kind of tapped it over to Coonan. Here's Shabazz. Three, no. In a game like this, it's great rebound by Bolton, a small thing, right? You know you're playing an opponent that wants to shoot so many three-point shots. Your guards have to anticipate the long rebound and track him down. Yeah, Gonzaga's done that really well. Coonan commits another foul. That's his third. Hawthorne already has three personals. He goes to Bolton with his five rebounds on the game. Excuse me. That was his first rebound. He gets five assists on the game. I can, I can read. I promise. <laughs> He's passing the heck out of the ball. Yeah, whatever. No, he's played really well. Yes. I mean, everybody on Gonzaga offensively has, has been in a rhythm. You don't shoot 59% as a team and, and not feel that, that rhythm and that flow to your game. And it starts to become infectious, right? Like, also just moving the ball, everybody's giving it up. They're being unselfish. And the next guy's getting a good look. You're turning down good ones, getting great ones. And that's been historically what we've seen out of Gonzaga. Newberry will shoot the three over top Timmy, and he makes the shot from the outside. An interesting story. Guido Newberry, who has done some good things for the Dons, 
Timmy offensive board foul against San Francisco. Newberry number 21 he was going to redshirt then Julian Rishwain tore his knee really just a few weeks ago and deep into the season they asked Newberry you willing to give that redshirt season up and play and Newberry said yeah he's made he's first three games he played they won all three I mean just energy great motor aggressive <laughs> Out Gigi Beria, who got hurt in the first half, comes back in. So that's good news for the Dons. Jimmy missed them both that time. Almost like he changed the routine on that one. Good defense by Bolton, denying Roberts the opportunity to get the ball back. Hickman trying to stay with Shabazz. A little crossover, and then Hickman committed the foul. Yeah, he, he's so, his handles are so tight, and his bounce and his rhythm into his shot. If, if he feels like you're lunging and reaching a little bit, he's going to go up, and this is the second time he's gone to the free throw line tonight to shoot three. I'm going to miss him. He has had such a great career. I mean, who would have ever thought? It's a kid who's sub six feet tall, hardly recruited out of high school, even though he's a great high school player in Seattle. He goes to Central Washington to start his career, then transfers to San Francisco. And who would have ever thought that that kid would turn into one of their great players of all time? They have an incredible history. On the hilltop, he's one of the best Don's players of all time. Going back between, uh, the backcourt between him and Bouye last year, just so special. That was nice news for Jamari Bouye. Wait, yesterday signed his 10 day contract with the Miami Heat. Timmy had the ball taken away. Touch. Well, one of the things Mark Few told us is, is sometimes they get a little lull on offense. Is how, how how do you avoid it when you have a big lead? That's the test mentally. Uh, can you stay with what has worked and what has helped you find your success, or do you start to deviate? Does the ball start to stick a little bit and the quality of shot drop? Shabazz, a little floater, no. Rebound tipped around. Watson had it, then stepped out of bounds. So that's going to be San Francisco ball. With 16 on the clock. They had a great ceremony before the game. Oh, look at that guy. Oh, not only was he the all. David Lalazarian, Kelvin Gibbs, Seth Suet. was a team that had beaten Indiana in the NCAA tournament the year before I arrived. And that Zags team throttled us up here. Throttled us. Offensive rebound for San Francisco. Well, as, as Mark Few said before the game, Mark said some words, very nice words about this former player. Overdue to honor Dan Dickow, one of the true all-time greats in the history of this program. All lit up, number 21 tonight. How cool is that? Yeah, it's, it's got to be an incredible feeling. And he is. One thing we love about Dan, he's around the program. He lives here in Spokane. He celebrates he's got the barbershop team. He, uh, he's a business owner in town. He makes relationships with the current players, has for years. Tries to make them feel welcome when they come here to play for this program. Youth Basketball Academy. You know, I mean, he's just, he's got his hands all involved in this community. And remember, he was a transfer from Washington. Found this place to be his home and has never, you know, outside of his pro career and his pro days, I mean, just, he stayed connected here. And that's the unique thing about college basketball. So frequently, we honor it in college football. And I feel like we don't do it justice when it comes to college basketball. The game is, is yes, about the current players. But it's also about the color of the uniform, the guys that have worn it in the past that have led the program to success. There was a great story today in the local paper, paper about how, you mentioned he transferred in, how that happened. 
And Richie Fromm was a buddy of his from growing up. He was a star here at Gonzaga. Washington was here to play against the Zags. Night before the game, Dan's in the team hotel. Richie and some buddies sneak over, tap on the window, bring Dan over to the Zags practice facility, start shooting with him and saying, you know, you, you look really good in our uniform. <laughs> oh, that was really cool. Then Greg, three, good. And the pride in the uniform here. I mean, this program's as proud as any in the country. Well, and, and the stacking of success, and it's crazy you lose two conference games. You're in second place to a team that also, by the way, is really good this year in St. Mary's. And, and a lot of times, it, it causes people to hit the pause button here. And part of that is because of how successful it's been, the accomplishments in which Mark Few and this program has year in and year out been able to do. Ragged sequence there. Shabazz in transition lays it in. Not many places you walk into. You see Final Four, Elite Eight, Sweet 16, Final Four, National Runner Up, Banners. You're in and you're out. Yeah. And that's why so much of the criticism of the Zags from the, the college basketball fan at large is unwarranted. It's the only program that's been to the Sweet 16 seven years in a row. Well, what about playing in the WCC? That hurts you, right? No, no. It does not. I mean, it never has. And the way they challenge themselves and their out of conference schedule. Mark Few didn't need to go out and schedule the schedule he scheduled this year, but he knows it's good for the game and he knows it's good for his team. By the way, I hope our graphics producer is ready tonight because that'll be 26 straight 20 win seasons after this one's over, barring something crazy. Well, and, and think about that. You know how hard it is to do that? I mean, in, in today's college basketball landscape, and they've done it with recruiting freshmen, they've taken transfers that have made impact. You know, Jonathan Williams was one of those that helped get the team to that Final Four there. They've done it with players that developed. Kelly Olynyk redshirted after he'd already played a year. He redshirted and then became the pro he's become. You and I have been around for a long time and, and called a lot of these games. And it's funny how success is built and how consistent it can be. And it's it really is about fostering a culture in which everybody feels like they're heard and they're cared for. And it does bug me, I have to admit. Uh, Zags fans are great, but they're, so, so Zags fans are cranky about this team. They're 19 and 5. Shabazz heaves one up, no good. Tap back to Roberts, open three. That one's short. Out bounds, and the vegan Zaga basketball wins against Kentucky and Michigan State and Alabama. And 19 and 5, about to be 20 and 5, and people here are ticked off. So, well, I didn't see any at Huckleberries this morning when we were having our <laughs> breakfast. Those people were very nice. They were. Oh, the people here are always friendly, but the standards here are so high that even a loss or two, and everybody is wondering what's going wrong. That's a byproduct of what you've created, though. That's a good problem, Dad. You go year in and year out going undefeated in conference play, people just expect. It, it, there's not going to be any disruption to that. But the train just keeps rolling. Not every team is going to make it to the national championship game. But By the way, in college basketball this year, look around. They might. You never know. Like, seriously, look around. Watson rejected Roberts. Listen, I'm not saying if I was picking four teams right now that I'd pick Gonzaga. But when you watch college basketball, you see so much confidence into the contest coming up this weekend. I mean, undefeated teams this late in the year going head-to-head -head in conference play. It'll be on in the front of the Shot no good. Salas right there for the putback. You're getting home that quick on Sunday? Early flight? Heck yeah. I love it. 
What a gamer. You're a family man, just like the guy. Yeah, we're we're not up seven though on the kid counter. Shabazz launches and hits. Wow, so good. Just left he Hunter Salas backpedaling. He is feeling it, and you know what? There's a lot of time left in this game. He so can get points in a hurry. Takes it down to 15 points, and that three-point line, as we talked about, they, they start knocking down shots. I go right back to it. Like, sometimes you got to do a little heat check. Like, I'm not in favor of all heat checks, but after the last two shots that he's just made, let's go ahead and heat check and see if number zero still got another one in him. Salas slipped. Shabazz not that time. The answer was no, Dave. I, I, I'm not sure if you caught up when you were following me there. I, I caught on, and I felt like it didn't really even need. Yeah, I, I, first home loss for Timmy has had in conference play. And, you know, it, it, some of that is, by the way, because of this program's commitment, you've seen a stronger commitment in other programs to invest in their basketball team, invest in the hiring process, and not just accept the fact that, you know, you're going to get smashed. Bolton banked in the three. Okay. I mean, if, if you don't make a commitment to wanting to try, then you're never going to. You know, this, pro, this this conference has had multiple bid seasons over and over and over again. Wow, Bolton, who's playing a heck of a game, just stole it right away from San Francisco. Smith draws the foul. So we talk about, obviously, Gonzaga and their, their historic run of, of consecutive tournaments, consecutive 20 win seasons, St. Mary's under Randy Bennett, the success they've had. But it's been BYU, it's been San Francisco, it's been other teams have stepped up and wanted to say, hey, we want to go to the NCAA tournament too. I thought Santa Clara last year you know, dealt with some injuries, otherwise they probably could have been a tournament team. And Jalen Williams, look at the season he's having for the Oklahoma City Thunder. It's good for the league that there are NBA players that are playing on other rosters as well. Jalen Williams kind of ruined LeBron's night the other night. He sets the all-time scoring record in the history of the NBA. Incredible record. Oklahoma City won that game, though, against the Lakers. And Jalen Williams is a huge reason why. I remember, Chet Holmgren's there, too, but he's missed the whole year. Uh, Chet's going to have a great NBA career. Assuming he gets healthy. That team is fun. Jay Gilders, Alexander. Yeah, here's the thing about that team, too. Outside of Chet, obviously, top prospect coming out of high school, came here, had a great freshman year. But guys like Shea Gilgis Alexander, he was like the last lowest recruit that went to Kentucky. You know, Jalen Williams was a guy that nobody really paid a lot of attention to and really grew, actually physically grew, and then also grew in his game as well to elevate to that level. It's, it's a grinder of a team. Bolton has matched Drew Timmy, by the way, with 21 points in the game. Timmy, we may not see much more of Drew Timmy from here on out. Anton Watson. Well, Bolton had 21 last time against them. They all came late in that contest when they rallied to win. Now they just need to stay focused and continue to play defense. Make sure you contest the three-point shot. Marcus Williams, tough shot, good. He has really struggled in two games head-to-head -head against Gonzaga. But that was a nice move. Ooh, Anton Watson slipped. He was wide open. Greg in and out on the three. Meeks hoists one up. Dallas, nice look. Smith three. No. Oh, Salas, another thing Mark Few was talking to us about was that Hunter Salas has a real knack for some of those kinds of passes. You know, the passes that we've seen so often 
in the past with the Zags program from so many of their great guards. Kind of a willingness to take some chances passing the ball. His evolution, not everybody evolves at the same pace. You know, everybody wants it like, okay, so top 100 recruit, got to come play like a top 100 recruit, got to show out every single game like a top one. That's not necessarily how this process goes. Look around the country. You know, it, it takes a little bit of time. Missed that three, and then Watson just outworked everybody, got the offensive rebound. I, I love Anton Watson. Love his game, love his understanding of who he is, understanding his strengths and weaknesses as a player, plays to his strengths, doesn't try to show off what his weaknesses are to prove those people wrong. He just plays to, to what he knows he can do. Coonan had it stolen by Watson. There he is again. Salas in the open court through the foul. That was a whistle. That'll take us to a timeout. Shabazz got 25, looking for some help. The biggest of his opponents point of the game, and the loss is 82. Uh, they've given up 86, and we've got eight minutes left. Yeah. A great defensive night for the Dons. Aiden Mahaney, this was the week, and we saw it happen, right? For the first upon the national scene. Everybody's finally noticing the success that he's had all year. Greg passed up the three, lays it in, and count the basket with a foul. Real good for Ben Greg. You know, get, uh, the other night he picked up some fouls early, took him out of rhythm. Nice, strong drive, realized the defensive player was in the restrictive arc. Easy call. He's got eight, make it nine. A ton of promise coming out of high school. Again, kind of like on that Anton Watson track line of, of having to wait your turn a little bit. But these moments in these games start to stack up and start to build some confidence. Jerry West said, if you don't have confidence, you really don't have that much game. And I think for Ben Craig, he needs to continue to work on putting himself in those kind of positions. That's an almost another steal, and Salas got nailed. Hopefully Hunter Salas is okay. We got hit right in the head. I mean, good play by Anton Watson slapping the ball away, and then it's it's more like a loose ball scramble situation when the contact is made. Again, scramble situation, and you're reaching in, and it's just a shoulder right to the head. So good to see him up and, and walk in and not have to go back in the locker room. Because he's played really well. He's got 13 points in 17 minutes. Had a tough night shooting from the outside. Hickman ducks right underneath the defender and lays it in. Roberts on this end scores. He has 65 points on the road, and the problem being, he's got a chance. The problem is that Gonzaga's been so efficient. 57% shooting. Their defense has been so disruptive, they've been able to get out and transition and run. Strother missed two that he usually makes. They like to see him get going a little bit more than he has recently. He's going to make an incredible game winner against BYU. In Provo, shot rejected by Hickman. Strother saved it in, but two Shabazz. No, tip. Hickman comes away with a ball. We think Evan, our producer, will have that uh, shot from Julian Strider queued up for our game Saturday here. And BYU comes to Spokane. If not, there's a phone call being made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you should probably have 
that one. Hickman short. And then Greg came with. Now Hickman got kind of popped in the jaw. Bolton all the way. I think we're going to start seeing more guys come out of this game. And again, that contest on Saturday, it's going to be it's going to be a big game. BYU's played better as of late. And they, and they feel like they've got some receipts they want to cash in, whether it's St. Mary's and the shot that Aiden Mahaney hit with 0.3 seconds against them to win or the shot at 9.8 seconds and the fact that they failed to get the ball inbounds with a lead with Gonzaga fouling that led to the three-pointer in the corner. And Mark Pope's team's going to come in here and they're going to be energized and focused. It's almost like they found a little formula, BYU. They're losing all those close games. Maybe the rotation's a little tighter. Maybe the style of play has changed just a bit as the year's gone on. Not quite as freewheeling, a little more grinded out style. Yep. Well, the strength has been the defense. And they've been a pretty good defensive team all year. They're physical. Roberts three is good. Who's Traore? I mean, he is strong, upper body, does a great job finding angles, offensive rebounds. Pass was deflected, trying to hit Watson going to the basket. Out of bounds. Well, you got to be physical. You come here and play against the Zags. Again, I said it in the first half. If you expect to just outrun them, outscore them, especially on this court, it's just not going to happen. Bolton ran right into that wall. Gigi Beria creates a turnover. Fifteen turnovers leading to twenty five points off turnovers. Too high of a number. Hawthorne goes to the basket, lays it in. Hickman committed the foul. We got an NBA Friday doubleheader for you tomorrow. It starts at 7:30 Eastern on ESPN. Celtics hosting the Mellow Ball and Hornets. Donovan Mitchell and the Cavs will take on the Pelicans. 10 Eastern, also on ESPN, streaming live on the app. Interested to see how the Hornets look post Mason Plumlee. He was traded today with the Clippers. A lot of trades today in the NBA. A lot of second round picks. I saw somebody give a joke out there. If if you're in a relationship and you're treated like the NBA treats second round picks on the trade deadline today, get out of that relationship. It's not the one for you. And I love it. I mean, they're, they're like, you get seven second round picks and Eric Gordon. Here you go. Uh, more of Farnham's trade deadline breakdown. 50 to go. You know we'll Kevin Durant moved? Right after this. I, yeah, Did you I hear that? that? Yeah. At Domino's, now you can carry out a one-topping pizza with any of our five press types for only $7.99. And you can order any way you want to, online or by phone. So choose hand-tossed, crunchy thin crust, gluten-free, Brooklyn style, or handmade pan, and your favorite topping for just $7.99 from Domino's. At Buffalo Wild Wings, the deals don't stop. Buy one, get one half off Wing Tuesdays. Buy one, get one free bonus Thursdays. And wing bundles from $9.99. Only at Buffalo Wild Wings. Did you know one of Nissan's EVs survived the North Pole? And one can go 0 to 60 in 2.8 seconds. And they're all emission free. But don't get an EV for the E. Get it because it pins you to your seat. Sparks your imagination and takes your breath away. Take you to the Nissan EVs aren't just electric. They electrify you. Oh, hey. What? Oh, don't judge me, Anton. Alcohol-free. Mm -hmm. Oh, back to work. Big 
game, big game. We skip the big game because the BK memes have been insane. Y'all really do it better than we do. So we took the night off to give the song to you. BK, have it your way. UCLA is coasting right now. Jordan behind a huge night from Amari Bailey. 24 KC for Bailey. He's getting out easy in the open floor. He's become a real weapon as of late for the Bruins. Pac-12 leaders win it by 15. Meantime, Wojo, Boogie Ellis, and USC and Eugene. Boogie Ellis, a certified bucket getter. One of the best one-on-one players in college basketball. Trojans start the night. Now one and a half games back of the Pac-12 leading Bruins as we head back to the kennel. All right, Kevin, thanks very much. Well, Amari Bailey's huge for UCLA and their potential to win a national championship. They need some guys to step up, have more weapons, space the floor for Jaime Jaquez. Just take the promo. You're on a roll. Coming up on Saturday on ESPN, we've got a trifecta of great games for you. Start with two out of the SEC in Kentucky and Georgia at noon, followed by Alabama and Auburn, and then Duke and Virginia at 4 p.m. Of course, you're going to stay around later on in the night to watch Dave and I here for BYU Gonzaga. Here's a look at Bracketology by Joey Brackets with six weeks left to go in the season. This is how it looks today. Could change. And will change. There was a flagrant foul during the time of Mark Fuse going, wait a minute, what? what? Gigi Beria misses the first. And will change. There was a flagrant foul during the time of Mark Fuse going, wait a minute, what? what? Gigi Beria misses the first of two free throws. It would be two free throws plus the ball for the Dons. I should read all promos. You know what? I encourage you. In fact, Saturday we may make an all Sean promo night. If you have anything left in the tank after the flatbread night tomorrow. Hey, raise that, the money. There was your, your uh, flagrant one. That's a flagrant one. Come get a flatbread. That's my plug. It'll be fun tomorrow night. It'll be great. Very fun. Hawthorne lays it in. So that'll frustrate Mark Few. But the right call. And, you know, we saw it earlier. Uh, was it Shabazz that they got the the, you know, the intentional foul from behind? He can't reach and grab somebody and pull him by the shoulder. Watson got fouled on this end. Well, San Francisco's got some regrouping to do. Don's have some games on paper that look winnable down the stretch, but not a good weekend. Last weekend at home in the Bay Area, now here on the road. And we keep saying San Francisco, this is a team that beat Arizona State in the Pac-12 by almost 40. Yeah. I mean, in, in Arizona State's team that still thinking, okay, we can maybe win a couple games in a row and play our way back in the tournament field. There's a couple of games, the Gonzaga game obviously at home, one they felt like they should have won. They should have been able to hold their lead against San Diego. Could have won that game in Moraga last week. And, and how different everything feels at 7-4 and four versus 4-7. Four and seven. And It starts to spiral on you a little bit. Watson another shot. It's a team that almost looks like they could use a dose of confidence. We hear it around this league. Man, San Francisco is dangerous. They're good. They can beat anybody. And you kind of wonder whether they believe that themselves sometimes when you watch them. Well, you don't usually see the double lane violation by two different players on back-to-back -back free throw attempts, but if you had that on your bingo square, go ahead and cross that one off. Oh, everybody stayed put. And Tom Watson earns the second. He was his third free throw attempt for a one on one, and he finally made it. He, he, even he smiled. Can't miss three of those in a row. He made them both. He, he goes two for four at the line, but two for two in the official box score. In fact. Good. They need more from him. I'm not saying it's all on him, but they need to find ways to get more from Marcus Williams. Well, only five shot attempts tonight. He's knocked down three of them. But he just hasn't been as involved, and he was sensational in Moraga. Wow, he had a ton of shots. He got USF 
right into that game in the end. Hickman down the lane, flipped it up and in. I mean, the, the problem isn't the offense per se as much as it is, I mean, the defense. I mean, if, if you told Coach Gerlison, hey, by the way, you're going to shoot, you know, 48% from four, have over 80 points. Like you're like, hey, we got a chance. We got a chance. But they've had no chance because of turnovers that have lead to run out and just a lack of commitment and ability to sustain stops. Watson almost lost it and draws another foul. Game. We got 2.06 to go. Let's see how Watson does in the free throw line tonight on this one. He's had a lot of practice. <laughs> Somebody just got lane violation in the student section. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they have a sense of humor here. Missed them both. Ben Gregg, offensive rebound. Timeout, Mark Few. She's going to get down Harris in the game. He doesn't want to actually huddle up and have a timeout. He just wants a substitution there. Zags, if they get to 100 tonight, that'll be the seventh time this year that they've reached the 100 point mark. And that would match the most all time in a single season in this program's history. So much of this year, and the concern people have is not because of the offense, it's because of the defense. And the, I think we've seen that over the last three games, though, some growth on that end of the floor. They've got to be able to have that consistency. You want to see that consistency? I thought they played a great defensive game against St. Mary's. Tough, physical, against a team that's about as tough as any in college basketball. Greg didn't want to shoot the three that time. Smith will shoot the three. No. Gale's playing down at LMU tonight. We had the update from Kevin earlier. Here's Williams again. Now Harris got fouled after getting a rebound. Come off the bench. Go ahead and make a play. Dom Harris will get a chance to shoot a couple of free throws. St. Mary's is up in that game by seven at halftime. At the game started with 16 nothing St. Mary's. What a great run by LMU. 16 nothing. So first point of the night for Dom Harris. down both. It's good to see Dom Harris out on the floor, have an opportunity. Uh, suffer that foot injury that kept him out all of last season. Final minute from Spokane. It's been all Zags really right from the opening moment. Shabazz missed that one. Smith grabs a rebound. off of Gonzaga. Drew Timmy's going to join us here in a second from what I was just told. Yeah, we're going to send it back to studio. They'll get you ready for USC Oregon. And then Drew will come over. 
He's had nothing to do in the second half, but think about what he's going to tell us about. I'm really excited for it. Has not played much in the second half. He his his mom and dad in Texas stick around for the post game. You get to hear from his son. Never at a loss for words. That's something that you and he have in common. Well, uh, uh, true. Uh, I'll tell you this: that that game coming up next, biggest week in the.